Okay, yeah. let's go. Um, so KPIs for APIs. Uh, first thing that you cannot see well is um, uh, when we look at what happens with COVID, uh, we can think of three benefits that uh, KPIs can bring to uh, the current situation. Uh, one is to lower the risk exposure that organizations have to physical transactions. Uh, another one is to help companies save costs and they, they need the cash right now uh, by eliminating redundancies. And the third one, which is the, the one you, you, you all know, is uh, to, to delight customers with self service an excellent uh, journey um, for their customers. So now let's uh, let's do it. Let's see how we can uh, make it happen and see how the API community can help in the current situation. Um, one thing that is important is uh, to understand the power of APIs. Uh, the first thing with APIs is that it is a way for a uh, team to, um, to assess their own success. Once you have a KPI, you know whether you've reached it or not. So that's the way your team will know whether it has reached its objective and it's an opportunity to celebrate when it's been reached. Along the journey, when the, the team works, it's uh, also important to have a KPI so that you can focus on things that matter uh, while you're implementing, implementing stuff. And finally, uh, one thing that is uh, uh, critical with KPIs is to establish and maintain a dialogue with uh, stakeholders. Uh, they want to know whether everything uh, that you're doing is going well and whether uh, you uh, you need support uh, by having KPIs then they can immediately see uh, whether things are going well on your side. So um, what we've done with uh, some colleagues is to uh, look at the 500 uh, API customers uh, that Axway has and uh, we were able to have conversations with uh, some of them uh, that actually share the KPIs they're using as part of their program uh, and, and we're happy to publish them and uh, get them public. So once you have the data, uh, it's, Eric, uh, Eric, it's, yeah. Just say, uh, some people think you are sharing the wrong tab because we just see on C1, we only see the first slide. And so we, we, don't, uh, we don't see the, the slides. Ah, okay. 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 Yeah. Some people propose to you share the link and, and they will be able to to browse it. Yeah, I don't know if you uh, is it. It should be it should be good now. Sorry for that, guys. Yes. Yeah, um, <laughs> um, now, so I was I was saying the if if you uh, look at uh, if you ask customers what are the KPIs they're using, you come up with uh, uh, tons of different ways of measuring their own success and. Um, what, what I've done was to look at what those uh, measures uh, look like uh, to see whether we could find uh, ways to create a connection between those KPIs and uh, what business people uh, wanna, wanna see. So we can identify groups uh, of, uh, uh, of KPIs uh, that will go into details. I'm gonna skip that part because we won't have time to uh, uh, to see see it again twice, but you can see um, how we worked uh, the research. And then we have to think about, okay, now that we have all those KPIs, what are those that are the most impactful for our stakeholders? Um, a, a schematic way of looking at the world is to think about a shareholder. The most important thing for a, stake, a shareholder is the stock uh, price of your company. Uh, and what the, the three uh, indicators that actually influence uh, stock price are your revenue, uh, your cost base, and the risk associated with your operations. Any stakeholders, once they have those one of those three metrics, they can uh, magically and uh, intuitively measure the impact it will have on the, the value of the company. So let's stick to those uh, three classic views of uh, and looking at things, revenue, cost, and risk. Um, in a most more modern uh, way of looking at it is to talk about consumption, efficiency, and resilience. Um, I like those terms better. So let's uh, let's have a look at uh, what uh, what we see with our customers. So on the 
upper left corner, uh, it's about um, uh, growth. So what we've seen with uh, Dun and Bradstreet is that they were able to grow by $30 million their business uh, thanks to APIs. Uh, same with Baird, they were able to grow and attribute the, their growth of business by 50% thanks to APIs. Um, another uh, indicator that I find useful is the um, acquisition of customers. So typically, uh, Permata Bank is a, an uh, Indonesian bank. And what they managed to do through a, a smart API program was to um, multiply their customer acquisition by four. So they measured uh, how many new customers they were getting through the API program. Now on the on, the, on this quadrant, uh, in terms of uh, uh, cl a classic way of measuring your program is uh, adoption. So typically, all those organizations are measuring the number of API calls per month, per year, uh, typically between 10 million and 10 billion API calls a month. Um, and as we can see, this is not something that we'll talk to uh, all the stakeholders. And this is where we need to create a link between this indicator and the indicator I started with uh, on the upper left corner. Uh, another way of talking about uh, indicators that drive consumption is to talk about uh, a marketplace and the choice you provide in your platform for uh, the community you're welcoming uh, as part of your API. So if we take an example, uh, Hainer, they're uh, an, a, a global insurance company for expats. They cover uh, 200 countries. Uh, they have uh, uh, 49,000 house partners uh, that are available through their APIs, and they service 10,000 companies. So this is a measure of the choice that you provide to your community uh, through your APIs. Uh, another one is uh, ATPCO, uh, which is um, a company that, that is uh, um, uh, helping airlines uh, monetize their tickets uh, through distributors. And the choice they're providing through their APIs, uh, they're measuring it uh, with 220 distribution channels uh, that they provide to 440 airlines. So here we can see you know, the publishers and consumers as part of a community, this is a platform. These are key metrics uh, for you to be tracking as part of your success because they are the ones that will drive, uh, again, the, uh, the revenue metrics. Um, RTE, which is a, a power distributor in, uh, in Europe, it's actually the, the largest power distributor, in that case, they had to uh, connect and provide access to 1,300 stakeholders, 1,300 stakeholders for a power grid across Europe. Um, uh, an example that we can see with many governments is uh, government typically is made of uh, 12 or 15 or 20 agencies. So to be able to cover and provide the choice of connecting to all those agencies is a metric in itself. Uh, so your coverage ratio here uh, has to be 100%. This is what uh, the um, state of Victoria achieved with their API platform. And we can see that again with uh, the, the government in Belgium. Uh, in their case, they managed to provide access. Uh, they started with 200 uh, data sources, and now it's up to 6,000 data sources, uh, thanks to their API program. Um, another way of uh, uh, measuring choice that we see very often uh, in teams is the number of APIs, which could be a trap because it is not because you have thousands of uh, APIs available that you're going to be successful. Um, however, once you've uh, reached a certain maturity in your uh, API um, journey, you will be able to start tracking your success by measuring how many APIs corresponding to different well-designed services that you're providing to your, um, uh, to your community. So Novartis, for example, in uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, they started with 170 uh, APIs, and now they're uh, tracking towards 450 APIs. Uh, same with uh, Total, the uh, energy company, they're above 100 uh, APIs. And finally, on the consumption side, um, some companies are tracking uh, 
a measure of the transformation they were able to achieve through APIs. So in the case of uh, Commerce Bank or The Star, which is a casino and entertainment group in uh, Asia, uh, they're measuring how much uh, it, the, their API program is impacting their business. In that case, 80% of their business is done through APIs. So these are consumption indicators. Uh, a little break on uh, before we move on to the next kind of uh, indicators. Vision without execution is hallucination. So now uh, let's move on to efficiency. Um, so in this case, uh, efficiency, the most interesting uh, data about efficiency is ROI. So ROI is a secret word that uh, gets many decision makers to understand and listen to what you're saying. So in, in the case of uh, AIFE, which is the uh, French uh, financial platform for the government, um, they were able to measure that their um, API and, and transformation program would cost them 1 billion euro, uh, but they were also able to measure that uh, they were able to recoup um, half a billion every year for two years so that they could uh, get a payback period of only two years out of the API program. This is the way you talk to investors. Uh, another one is uh, the Star Entertainment Group. In their case, uh, they were able to measure and, and show that uh, they could uh, save $4 million uh, with, uh, with the API program. Same with the Toll Customs, which is the, um, the border services in Norway. Uh, Danish Defense, which you know, is the defense in Denmark, uh, another way that they, um, a, a metric that they tracked was the, the cost savings they could uh, achieve through uh, their API program. In their case, up to uh, 96%. And the other metric is 96%, but in how much time? In six months. Um, so this is about ROI. This is about uh, real money uh, savings. Uh, this is the way you talk to um, uh, every stakeholder part of your program. Now let's have a look at um, the uh, an another indicator of success, uh, which is velocity. So velocity, uh, in the case of uh, the, uh, uh, the French uh, family uh, social services, what they, what they were able to measure is their ability to release innovation to their base. So it's, uh, they've managed to multiply it by seven. So they're seven times faster now to release innovation to their, um, uh, to their, um, uh, to their base. Same with high mark, in that case, 60 times. So if you think about the metric of what is um, my time to release a feature, you can, you, you can measure it directly or uh, measure the improvement in velocity that you've uh, obtained. Uh, an, an example like this is uh, CMA CGM, which is a, um, an ocean uh, shipping company. Uh, what, they, what they were able to measure is that in the past, their customers could um, benefit from their innovation every three months. And now they can stick to their users' uh, need uh, way better because they can release those innovations on a weekly basis. Uh, same with the uh, KGI Bank in, uh, in Asia. Um, they're able, they, they were able to track the, the time to open an account. So, and it went from three hours to two minutes. This is a huge driver to your user experience uh, driven by efficiency. And this is gonna drive uh, either cost saving or uh, re revenue increase. Now let's talk about uh, cost avoidance. As, as we know, APIs is a great way to uh, get rid of uh, ad hoc one-to-one um, uh, -one integrations uh, and, and replace it with a contract that can service multiple needs. Um, in the case of NG, which is a utility company, what they, uh, what they measured is that thanks to their program, they were able to divide their cost by three um, by uh, dividing the number of integrations they had to uh, uh, take care of in order to uh, take care of their community. Same with uh, the Milan airports. Uh, what they uh, what they measured was that uh, thanks to the API program, 
they were able to um, uh, to save 30 percent on their integration cost uh, by just implementing apis rather than the uh, their old architecture and uh, another example i like a lot is uh, bnp paribas uh, bnp paribas personal finance is using uh, uh, the apis across uh, 33 countries and they, they actually created a catalog of all those apis and thanks to that catalog they could actually detect redundancies uh, between countries of apis that were pretty much doing the same thing and then uh, cut some of the programs and put those resources onto more uh, productive uh, activities uh, still in uh, efficiency um, one, uh, you know, one uh, impact that uh, APIs can have is on, uh, uh, is on productivity. In the case of Amerisource Bergen, which is a leader in, uh, in the pharmaceutical industry in the US, um, Amerisource Bergen was able to calculate the time saved by field uh, medical personnel uh, to service the pharmacies thanks to their API program they were able to increase their productivity by 40%. And this, this is something that is uh, useful to track as part of an API program. Um, another example I like is, uh, we, we, we talked about them earlier, it's the, the borders in Norway. They were uh, calculating the time it takes for a truck to go through the border, and they were able to go five times faster uh, thanks to their, to their program, or B3. Uh, an exchange in, in Brazil, they were able to ship data to their customer, which is their uh, business model, um, in 50% faster than before, thanks to their program. Of Fannie Mae in the, in the US for, uh, for mortgage um, insurance, uh, what, they, what they calculated in their case is, what, what was the impact of their program on the time to troubleshoot um, issues? And they realized that they could go five times faster so those metrics all go into efficiency if you pick one of them uh, when you talk about efficiency it will resonate with um, uh, the people you need to convince when uh, investment time comes another transition if you can measure it you can't improve it all right so the third um, category is uh, is on resilience so in the case of uh, resilience, what, um, uh, what we see is a typical classic uh, metric, which is about availability. So availability is uh, typically measured um, with the platform availability, and uh, people typically track this between 99.9 and 99.99%, which is uh, not that important for a startup, but when you actually support a platform of thousands of companies and uh, or millions in the case of uh, AIFE, it is the most critical uh, metric uh, you need to track and you need to make sure that it's uh, always on otherwise you're out of business uh, talking about resilience and risk uh, second category is about compliance so when it comes to compliance it can be compliance to standards or regulation uh, let's talk about regulation um, ACOS, which is a social security in France uh, with a 500 billion euro uh, budget, what they, um, uh, they had to comply with uh, the open data uh, regulation in, um, in, uh, in France. And uh, it was binary. They, they either complied or not. So they, they reached the goal. Same with many banks like uh, uh, Sparbank or uh, Group BPC. Uh, another in, uh, in banking. Now let's talk about other areas because it's funny, actually regulation and standards are everywhere. Uh, in the case of NATS, which is the air traffic control um, in system in the, uh, in the UK, they had to comply with the uh, single European sky uh, regulation and they, they passed it thanks to their API program. Uh, same with uh, Tim, uh, they wanted to adopt an, uh, an open API, the open API uh, TM forum uh, specifications and they passed it. So again, um, this compliance thing looks like a uh, burden, but it, it is the cost of doing business. And uh, it is important to track these uh, and report this as part of your API journey. 
finally, on uh, uh, two, two, two little things. Uh, an, an emerging indicator is um, uh, resilience when it comes to the skill set you have available in-house uh, to support your program. So um, in the case of Commerce Bank, they were able to track uh, the number of developers uh, allocated to their program that went from 15 to 80. And it is a great way to make sure that your organization is resilient to anything that can happen. And finally, uh, let's talk about security, uh, cyber security or security uh, when it comes to uh, resilience. With uh, COVID, we've seen uh, the number of threats uh, going up and uh, it's actually impacting lots of organizations and a measure of uh, the uh, uh, success of your team when it comes to security can be uh, the time to address a security threat. Uh, and uh, an example of Sirius, which is a, a media platform based on the radio in the US, uh, they were able to uh, uh, go 10 times faster uh, thanks to their API program. That's it. So um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, lesson learned, um, what one thing that is very important is to make sure that you link uh, your uh, operational KPIs to numbers and indicators that can be understood and related to by your stakeholders. So um, when it comes to revenue, you need to make sure that any revenue you generate uh, that you track through usage or uh, through the type of transaction that you support is attributed to your program. So that's attribution. Um, the second thing you need to be, to look at is allocation of cost. So uh, it's it looks like jargon, but uh, uh, in accounting, when you um, uh, when you have a cost, you need to allocate it, and you need to be allocated your cost safely. One thing that we see more often, more and more often is that company use API uh, metrics like the number of calls per uh, met per organization within the company to allocate the cost of the API program. So that's very useful also to, uh, to share the cost of your investments. And finally, uh, this is uh, something that was mentioned uh, quite a few times earlier, the direct monetization of your API, meaning you're gonna charge somebody based on a pricing plan for APIs is an exception. Less than 5% of organizations do it. The actual monetization and real money is uh, made out of indirect usage of your data or indirect distribution of the audience that your company was able to reach thanks to a great application. Now, um, let's uh, let's go let, let's go about uh, identifying what are the right KPIs uh, depending on where you stand in the uh, in your journey, in your uh, in the maturity of your program, um, so I encourage everybody to think in terms of OKRs rather than KPIs. But that's uh, that would be another conversation we won't have time today. Um, so if we measure what matters, uh, you need to look at the four areas uh, that matter to reach success in the digital economy. Um, so you need great products based on a platform that is not only a technical platform, but also a digital platform um, that is tracked and uh, fostered through a program and all that based on a strategy. Uh, so these are the four areas that are gonna be uh, helping you measure your um, maturity in the API journey. So for example, if we take um, a bank that's just gone through a PSD2 uh, compliance, uh, you can tell that they're intermediate when it comes to uh, releasing products. Um, the platform has started, uh, but they do not necessarily need to have a strategy or a program. Same with a company that would have created its first API just to address a requirement from a customer or a partner. This is where lots of companies stand right now uh, based on the, the work we see um, in the Catalyst team at X, right? So in the case of this uh, company in fairly early stage, uh, what matters to them in terms of the, the three families and three categories of APIs 
is uh, adoption when it comes to uh, revenue, uh, velocity when it comes to uh, uh, the cost, you want to make sure that you can show that you're efficient. And of course, compliance, uh, if it was all about complying with, uh, with the regulation. Um, now, as, as the organization mature and gets uh, better and better and experts uh, years after years, and here I say five years, but in, you know, it can take 10 years, um, you're going to have to select what KPIs matter to you as part of that journey so that you can move on to the next stage that you decided you wanted to reach uh, for the next year. And the selection of uh, your KPIs will gradually depend on where you come from and where you're going to and the, the focus you want to give for the months to come because no team is unlimited and it is essential to prioritize things. And finally, as a takeaway, uh, this is the KPIs for APIs takeaway. Uh, if you think about uh, what, uh, what are the absolute KPIs that will work very well in any circumstances, um, it, one is about consumption or revenue, and you can actually track and report it directly once you've created the um, uh, attribution of revenue. Uh, and the other one is about efficiency, which would work well once you've done all your work with uh, the allocation. And the other one is on resilience. So these are KPIs that you can report to yourself and to your stakeholders as part of a dashboard. Um, and the uh, drivers uh, that you can use in order to create this allocation or attribution uh, are those ones that we just covered. Uh, so that could be a cheat sheet for you guys to uh, think of. And um, I'd be very happy to uh, to get your feedback on, on this. And um, this is... Uh, Continuous improvement, work in progress. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, it was really insightful, and I know this KPIs for APIs question happens uh, uh, all the time. Uh, for respecting the time in, in our in our last uh, keynote speaker, uh, yeah, um, uh, we will not take any questions, but uh, I'm I'm sure people can reach you or in other in the chat, either uh, on the Axway booth uh, there, so you can. All right. uh, yeah, thank you very much, Eric.